Alrighty, let's go through some of the stuff that I think will really help. Um, it'll help train the smaller muscles around your hip and around your spine. That'll, that'll give you a bit more confidence going forward in terms of those areas that we worked on today. Uh, actually, I might just explain what we're doing because I'll put this on YouTube. Um, so I'm going through this video to follow up with some clients that I had today on the table who were um, presenting with pain that was provoked out of the sagittal plane. So a lot of it was like rotation and, and frontal plane activation. They weren't being provoked in the sagittal plane. And so I started to treat them in the sagittal plane. But some of the stuff that I found that was making the biggest impact was obviously stuff that was in the rotary plane, but not in the aggravating areas. As an example, um, some back pain. So obviously back pain on rotating, back pain on lateral bending, but there was no back pain on extension or flexion. So we started having a bit of an assessment through that flexion and extension of not just the spine, but also the hips, uh, the neck and how the neck was moving as well. But one of the ways that I uh, consciously drove the treatment towards that problem area was by tackling it in uh, rotation and in the frontal plane, but from a different section of the body, just so that I could get a bit of relief and, and introduce some people to the idea that some parts of your body will impact the function and health of other parts of your body. So this is a concept called regional interdependence. Uh, so what we did was I treated the hips, we did some freeing up of the rotation in both hip flexion and extension. So when they were on their back, so in supine, and when they were on their front in prone. Uh, the way that I want to lock some of that range of motion in is by teaching them how to access those, those tissues when they're on their back, on the floor, nice and safe, nice and protected, away from um, you know, a, a stability requirement that might not quite be there that might exacerbate a symptom. So this one's a really simple one where we start on the ground and I'm using my leg to create flexion, so I'm in the sagittal plane. I know that this doesn't bring on symptoms because I assessed it. I don't even know if I'm in the camera. We'll do that. So I'm starting in the sagittal plane because I know that it didn't bring on symptoms. Then I'm getting these people to reach across their body with their foot. So I'm trying to create length through extension of the leg. So I'm in hip flexion, but my leg is extending, oh yeah. Now, as I come into these end ranges, a lot there'll be a lot of sensation through the hip, through the spine, maybe even through the opposing hip. As a lot of these muscles get pulled into their end ranges, and when they do that, there's a mechanism in the brain that actually gets those muscles to switch on, and it kind of feels like a cramp. But that muscle is now being switched on because it's been lengthened in a way that it hasn't been challenged in a while. So it's reactive um, grabbing, like this cramping feeling is there to say, hey, We've reached a few barriers. So from that point, you just start to breathe and unwind. We've loaded these really small muscles that are very, very close to the center of our body or very close to our joints. We've loaded these muscles. They've had a bit of a stimulus and now we're going to slowly unwind just to build a little bit of time under tension. We're not moving fast. If we move fast, we'll load big muscles. The slower we move, the more we'll bias those very, very deep internal joint specific muscles. In this instance, I'm just targeting some of the muscles that are really deep to my femur. I'm not specifically targeting one or the other. I'm just trying to get my femur to spin into its end range and then me try to create length through some of those tissues as I move the leg across into the rotary and in the frontal plane. So here I'm on my back, sagittal plane. I'm going to start creating this rotation. So I'm now moving into the transverse plane and I'm reaching across into the frontal plane. I feel a lot of deep lateral hip. I'm just gonna slowly, slowly unwind. And I'm just looking for little checkpoints of, of tolerance. And as I come to them, I just pause and have a breath. I'm really taking my time unwinding back into the sagittal plane. And what that's doing is it's building time under tension for a lot of those smaller muscles. These muscles that don't get a lot of the attention when we load 
um, through bigger compound movements like squatting and deadlifting, these muscles are still getting load, but they're not getting the sort of specific load that they want. Small movements for small, uh, for small muscles. And a lot of people that present with these um, irritated t uh, tendon issues or really deep uh, ligamentous issues, this is a great way to load uh, some of those smaller tissues safely because there's no extrinsic load, it's just your leg. So if you can move your leg around smooth, then you've got great fine motor control. Those small muscles, they're nice and strong, they've got plenty of tone, and they're able to reciprocate tension across uh, the front and back of a joint, or I should say around a joint, which is successive induction. Another neurological principle where we're trying to develop uh, movement sequencing, and the stronger that muscle is, the more likely it's going to help develop that movement sequencing. So we're just grabbing the front and grabbing the back of a joint and working with each other instead of this idea that when one flexes the other kind of just allows for this length. They're both flexing, it's just that one's flexing harder to create movement in a direction. Anyway, that's the long and short of it, but let me reiterate it for the people that I'm actually making this video for. We're trying to create small movements from a very stable platform, small movements just with the legs at this stage, uh, and as you develop a little bit more control, I want to know how your symptoms feel particularly through those outside of the hip and through those and for those through the back. Thanks so much.